Well, good morning, Woodlawn family. It's so nice to see all of you. Thank you for taking the time to worship with us here at our 930 service. And again, uh, how many of y'all appreciate the extra hour? I appreciate the extra hour of sleep. It was really helpful, especially when you have an 8 a.m. service. It was very nice this morning to have an extra hour of sleep. And I did notice that uh, Andrew referenced um, Sky Zone. Uh, in the early service, he rubbed it in a little bit that I set my, put my back out last week trying to be, play with my kids. Uh, I realize that I am not 20 anymore. Uh, my brain tells me I'm 20, but my body does not. Did a backflip, landed wrong, and uh, yeah, I've been nursing a back all week long. But other than that, life is good, and you are in for a treat today. We have a very, very special guest with us, a friend, uh, really part of our family here at Woodlawn Church, Dr. Fred Tokes with us this morning. He'll be coming up in just a moment. Dr. Fred is an incredible man. Um, you know, what's interesting is when I first became pastor of Woodlawn Church back eight years ago, we were praying, and we just asked God to show us who that he wanted our church to partner with, because we really wanted a, a partnership. We wanted a long-term relationship with a missions ministry that was doing a great work somewhere in the world, and we just asked God to show us. Well, through a series of events, the Lord has connected our church in partnership with People for Care and Learning, PCL in Cambodia. And for the last uh, almost five years now, we have been working with that ministry, and they are doing such an incredible work in Cambodia. And it's been such a joy to partner and be a part with the ministry. In fact, um, <clears throat> I was asked, and I was very honored to, to be asked a couple of years ago to become part of the board for People for Care and Learning, and we had a board meeting the other day, and I was so incredibly impressed with what God is doing in and through PCL in Cambodia and even beyond that, and some exciting things are coming up. We're really excited about that, but without further ado, um, Dr. Fred Toke. He is the chief of operations of People for Care and Learning, but he's also a doctor. He is a psychologist, and I want to tell you what, he comes with a wonderful message today, but he is traveling with his lovely wife, Agnes, and this is the first time we've had a chance to meet her in person, and she is so lovely. Thank you for being with us today. Could you give Dr. Toke a big hand at this time? <clears throat> Dr. Fred Toke, uh, also known as the... Tokiman. The Tokiman. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Matt, and uh, good morning. All right, is it good morning or is it good Lord this morning? <laughs> I'm back. It's good to be back here. I have a family here. And of course, I uh, brought my wife here. Agnes, can you stand so that uh, they can uh, recognize? <laughs> Woohoo! Well, we've been married for uh, 34 years. Wow. Whew. She's my better half. Because she would tell me, you better do this, you better don't eat that. <laughs> How many husbands have a better half here? <laughs> I know when you look at her, you look at me and you ask yourself, right? How did it ever happen? Right? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it took me seven years before I said yes to her. <laughs> You know, it's a lie, right? Yeah, it was nine years, actually. <laughs> well, I'll bring you greetings from Asia. And if you ever go, go to China, you might be confused with some of the signages in China, right? like this one. Please pay your parking fee before existing. So if you have not paid your parking fee, you don't exist in China. Okay. And Pastor Matt was talking about PCL board meeting that was taken, that taken place just a couple of days ago. This is our board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you, go, if you go to China, you need some translation service, go to this one. Could not connect to translator service. <laughs> I don't know what it meant, actually. Well, if you think this actually only happened in China, well, back here in your own backyard... God holds each accountable for sin and will punish Pastor Larry with that. <laughs> Poor Pastor. <laughs> He's taking everything on your behalf, okay? This is... 
just missing one period, just missing one full stop, it, it changes. All right, uh, I'm, I'm so happy to be back in Canton. And uh, last year, this time, you know, give or take a couple of weeks, I was here. Then after visiting Canton, speaking here, I thought I would want to take a drive to Cleveland to see what it is there. So I took a day drive, stay a night in a hotel, and the next morning, snow covered everything else, including the car that I rented. And I was supposed to drive to the airport to catch my flight. And the, the snow was about a foot high, and, and I really don't know what to do because I never experienced this kind of, this kind of snow. So I went to the receptionist, and I asked, you know, can someone help me? She just gave me a shovel. <laughs> so what do I do with this? Well, what is this for? Man, for one hour I have to shovel. I never shovel any snow for, in my entire life. And that was like I, I was perspiring in the snow. I didn't expect that to be. I was, you know, looking at my watch. I need to return the car. I need to get to the airport. I was scrubbing the snow and all that. Obviously, I don't have good memories of Cleveland, but I always have good memories of here in Canton. You're my family. I may look different from you, but you are my family. When we go to heaven, you see me, and you see people of all different nationalities and races. Amen? Today, I want to talk about um, how to deal with disappointment. COVID has caused a lot of disappointment in many of us. In fact, the world has been COVIDized, tribalized, polarized, politicized, and traumatized. It traumatized many. Well, we often get updates about the number of people who contracted the, um, the virus. I'm, I'm thankful that Pastor Zach is here with us. And I'm um, so happy to see him leading worship. Isn't God good? And praise God for healing. It's never fun to be in that. Never fun. And, you know, we, we have all kinds of updates about the, the people who got contracted uh, with the virus and people who died from it. Um, but we don't really get updates on those who actually suffer psychologically from it. World Health Organization has come up with these statistics that uh, in the past year, one in four people in the world are suffering from depression. One in four people. One in six are suffering from anxiety. And every three seconds, one, two, three, Someone is attempting suicide now. This attempts. Every 40 seconds, someone commit. That's the world we have today. Many are experiencing disappointment. And I thought I want to talk about this and how we can work on how to deal with our disappointment. So if you are not going through any form of disappointment right now in your life, congratulations, well done. Enjoy it while it lasts. Because disappointment will come. This is all part and parcel of life, isn't it? But we have a, a, a way to deal with disappointment. And you know what? Disappointment comes from people who are closest to us. The closer they are, the greater the disappointment, isn't it? We trust somebody only to be cheated or to be betrayed by that person. That will bring great disappointment. So if you are going through disappointment today, well, there are five steps that we can learn to deal with this. Now, this, this, was, this story was found in the book of Genesis, right at the beginning of time, and now in the 21st century, these five steps are still applicable. This story is about Abraham and his nephew, Lot. Lot also, who, Lot also, who went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents. Now the land was not able to support them and they might dwell, that they might dwell together for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. You know, when you have little, you have little problem. When you have more, you have more problem. And when the family incorporated was doing well, the, fa- the, the uncle and nephew had problems. They said, money, uh, no, blood is thicker than water, but money is thicker than blood. Isn't it true? Money has caused many families to break down. Money has caused families to be separated. 
And in this case, it was money. Abraham was very disappointed with his nephew because there was strife between the herdsmen of uh, of Abraham's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. So he go to bed every night thinking about, you know, what to do next with this nephew of mine? What is he, what is he going to do next? And, 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 and he was just wanting to protect his interests, rightly so, and he was not feeling at peace. I doubt he had good nights of sleep. And so one day he got up and he told his nephew, hey, we are relatives, please, let there be no more strife between us. If you want to go to the north, you go, and I'll choose the south. If you choose east, I will choose to go west. You go. And the two men were separated. And that was when Abraham became disappointed because he lost two things, his business and his legacy. Because Lot was one of his nephews. His wife, Sarah, was barren, and he took one of his nephews along with him, thinking that, you know, this nephew will become his legacy. So he poured his life, his investment, everything, everything that Lot knew was taught by his uncle. But Lot said, I don't need you. I don't want to be known as Abraham's nephew. I want to be known as Lot, the successful person. I want to be my own man. And so he, he separated from his uncle and that left Abraham to slump into disappointment. You know, every time when we, I, my patients walk into our clinic, as soon as they sat on the couch, they go into this position. It's like going into the fetal position. I don't want to be hurt anymore. Don't want to be vulnerable. And so they make themselves as small as they can. Abraham was feeling this way, and that was when God spoke. Five steps to deal with, the, the, with, with disappointment. Number one, we, you know, in the midst of all this crisis and pain and disappointment, we need to learn to be still. The Bible in Psalms 46 says, Be still and know what? That I am God, that He is God. It is during those moments of solitude, of stillness, it's those moments of peace. This is where God began to speak. During the crisis, during the conflict, our mind is so filled with all the plans and the plots that we are conjuring up to, to outbeat this competitor of ours so much so that our mind is so busy and we kick God out of the equation. You see, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14, it says, the Lord said to Abraham after Lord has separated from him. After the Lord spoke, after. Sometimes we need to let some people go in our lives. Sometimes we need to let some toxicity out of our lives. Sometimes we just need to let our pain and our hurts and some things. We need to let go in order for us to listen to the still, small voice of God. See, when God spoke, he gave, in, he gave instructions. When we, are, when, we are, when we are busy in our mind, we are not listening to those instructions and the wisdom of God. We've got to learn to be still. Sometimes we need to let some people go. Abraham let his nephew go. But Abraham continued to pray, for his, to pray for his nephew. He needs to go. And after Lot left, there was peace. And it was when, when, when Abraham slumped into his seat and his couch, whatever that he was, God spoke. Maybe our minds are too busy trying to plot against this person, trying to deal with this situation, but we fail to listen to the voice of God. I know you guys are Americans, but some of us here are Russians. 
We are more Russians than Americans because the moment we wake up, we rush here, rush there, rush there, rush, rush <laughs> everywhere. So we are basically Russians. Good Lord, it's morning. Dun, 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 dun. We go throughout the day. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so much so that God is saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. But you are ignoring God because your mind is so busy. You're rushing from point A to point B, dealing with problems A to problems B to problems Z. You got to let God speak. I found this little video. They can see already. These two deers were fighting one another. They were locking horns with each other. But what? While they were fighting one another, they failed to see the oncoming lion is coming at them. Just wait, just wait. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Ice, oh, oh my God. God. It's over. <laughs> Too late. Sometimes we're so engrossed with our own thoughts that we fail to see the danger that are out there. The real enemy that's out there is trying to devour you. Step one. You got to learn to be still. As you go through your disappointment, be still, be in the presence of God. And then he spoke. Listen to him. Second step, you got to learn to look up. Don't look down. Look up. The very first thing that God spoke was, Abraham, lift your eyes now. Come on, Abraham, stop looking down. Lift up your eyes. Look up. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the maker of heaven and earth. We need to reach out. You know, above the rain clouds, the sun continues to shine. Perhaps we have been clouded by the rain clouds, but we need to keep going up beyond the rain clouds to reach out to God. That's the time we need to look up and be connected with God and praise Him and pray and thank Him in everything through prayers and supplication and thanksgiving. Make your request known to God. Look up. There is hope. There is always hope. Some people, because of their problems, they became cavemen, C-A-V-E. You know what C-A-V-E means? They complain about virtually everything. You, you will meet them. You will meet them. When you greet them, you're so happy. Good morning. What's so good about the morning? And they vacuum and suck out all the joy that you have. We need to reach out to God and be connected with God. And not be cave people, but be pave people. P-A-V-E. Possibilities about virtually everything. When you have pavement ahead of you, there is hope that there's future. Reach out to God. Above the rain clouds, the sun is still shining. Six years ago, I said yes to people for care and learning. And to get in, I mean, to work and serve in this organization, I have to live in this country called Alabama. Do you know this country? It's a different place altogether. You owns, you all. <laughs> so different. And okay, we got an apartment and then we, we tried to get our apartment set up. So uh, Walmart was my, like my second home because I got to get, Walmart, get to Walmart to get everything I need, right? It's everything under one roof. And so we got. We get our furniture, we get our everything, appliances and everything from there. And then we, I bought one of these extension cords. And I said, hey, all right, I, I need to, f to connect my computers and everything else. So I, I, I got this. I, I plug it into the extension cord. I turn it on, and there was no power. I plug it, turn it off, and plug it in. I turn it on again. There's no power. Man, this is disappointing. This is a lemon. So I need to bring it back to Walmart. I pick it up. When I pick it up, I realize what happened. 
Silly me, right? I pluck it up on itself. Silly me. But some of us pluck ourselves to ourselves. We don't pluck our life to God. Where is my source of power? Where is my source of help? We need to pluck ourselves to God, to heaven, to look up. I will, we will. You know, ever since I become a Christian, I never use I will anymore because I'm no longer an individual because I am with God. God is with me. And so we will do this together. Now, if you're one of those who like to do things on your own and you use pronoun I will all the time, when you remove the apostrophe, that is where you know the difference. When the devil sees me, he sees me with my God. I'm not alone. I'll be well. But when I'm alone, the, the lion, the devil is like a roaring lion seeking for one to devour. Stay connected. Look up. In spite of what's going on, look up to God. Praise Him. Pray. Thank Him for everything that you have or not have. One of my favorite verses, I think I may have done this last time I came. I can do all things. And don't stop here. Don't stop here. True Christ who strengthens me. Because if I is in collaboration with Christ, I have power. Amen? But many stop here. I can do all things. When all things fail, they assume that they are a failure. No, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Whenever I'm in collaboration with God, this is where my power comes from. I don't work alone. I have my God with me. Can you show me your 10 fingers? Let's do this together. If you're one of those unique few with the 11 finger, that will be your exclamation mark, okay? That will be your exclamation mark. Come on, come on, let's yell it out together. One, two, three. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That's not very convincing. <laughs> come on, you got to believe that. You got to believe that. Come on. One, two, three. I. Me, God, together, power. You know, it's easy for us to say this now because when we are not struggling with anything, but it is when we are down in a doldrum, this is where it becomes powerful. Stay connected with God. Look up. So you got to be still. You want to overcome your disappointments. Learn to be still. Get away from it all. Let go, some pe- let go of some people. Let go of some re- toxic relationship that you are indulged in. Let go of some things. Then look up. Listen to what God had to say. And then look around. See, the sequence was this. He was down and God spoke. Lift your eyes now. Look up. And then he said, look around. Lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Hey, one door closed. There are 99 more that can be open. Open your eyes and see. Look around. And God was telling Abraham, look around. Look, look. For all your eyes can see, for all, all the land which you see, I give it to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. Two things that he lost, God is going to give him back in greater measure. His business and his legacy. He did it. The Bible didn't. Mentioned about him praying about this. But God, when God spoke, God knew. God knew what's going on in your life. Sometimes we need to let something go so that we can receive something greater. When we're holding on to the little things that we have, we are not able to receive anything else from God. He says, look around. Abraham, look up. 
Look up. Now he got, he got Abraham's attention. Now look around. Eastward, northward, westward. Look around. All the lands you can see, I'm going to give it to you. You know what? Sometimes you're so trapped in our own world that we fail to see that uh, there are many other opportunities around. We're so engrossed with your pain that we fail to notice that there is an opportunity here. There's another opportunity there. There's another opportunity here. So that was what, that was what Abraham was going, on, going through his mind. But God told him, look up and look around. Come on, Abraham. Come on. What makes you think that I cannot open another 99 doors for you? Why do you limit me? God is speaking to some of us today. Why are you limiting me? Why are you holding on to what was lost and not open your hands to receive what could be greater? Abraham was much, much, was blessed much, much more after Lot had left. You see the missing tooth? But did you actually see the missing eyebrow? <laughs> Sometimes you're so focused on one thing that we fail to see others. Number one, be still. Number two, look up. Number three, look around. Number four, rise up. So the sequence. After Lot left, Abraham slum. And then God spoke. Look up. Look around. You see all this? Rise up. Stand up. Get up. Get out of your apathy. Come on. There are opportunities out there. Get up. You know, the worst thing that can happen to us is that when we heard the voice of God and God has promised us greater blessings, but we refuse to stand up. We gave all kinds of excuses. Now nah, it's too difficult. It's too hard. It's too far. It's too much. But God told him, rise up. Rise up. And I want to rise up. I want to go beyond just standing. I want to stand on the chair and say, God, I am ready. Woohoo! I'm here, God. You know, when you stand up and you yell out, you are also telling the devil, you have no chance on me, God. You have no chance. I am now with God. Woohoo! Now I know what is it like to be tall. <laughs> Woohoo! Woo. Rise up. Get out of your apathy. Many times, depressed patients ask me, What must I do to, to get myself out of this? You know, situation and my depression. I said there are two D's that you need. Number one, you need to be determined. Number two, you need to be disciplined. Well, you need to have discipline. When you have two, these two D's, then you don't need the third D. That's drugs. If you are disciplined and you are determined, you can do anything you want. Many times it's because we fail in our determination and fail in our discipline. God says, arise, walk in the land to its length and its width, for I give it to you. Arise. Number five, we have to learn to move on. You see the sequence here? God spoke. Look up. Look around. Rise up. Move on. He says, walk, arise, and walk, and walk in the land to its length and its width, for I give it to you. You got to walk. You got to get away from your position of pain. God says, the blessing is there. I've opened a new door there. Get away from this position. Get out. Move on. Don't stay here. If you go to, and Abraham went and moved his tent 
and went and dwelt by the Atarabin trees of Mamre. Mamre in Hebrew means strength and fatness. This was when Abraham was greatly blessed. Well, if you go to Chiang Rai in northern Thailand, you will, you will visit the elephant camps and you see how they train those elephants and how they tame them. So every baby elephant was tied to a tree. And so he, every time he tried to escape, he could not. And as he tried to uh, move away from the tree, the noose, the rope gets tighter and it hurt his leg. So it comes to a point where these baby elephant gave up in their mind. It's no point trying. Some of us were told when we were younger, you're not good enough. So we are trapped with that. When God gave you an opportunity to serve, to do this and that, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. So when these young baby elephants grew up to become humongous animals, and whenever the trainer tied a rope, it, it's on the, its leg to a little tree. It just wouldn't move because it's trapped in the mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Be transformed by the removal of my problems. Is that what it said? Now, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But we know this verse well, but we act as though I will be transformed only when all my problems are solved. No, it's here. It's here that we need to get out of. You know, we need to get out. There are people in our past that need to be let go. Perhaps our previous, our past prizes, our successes may be holding us back. We have always done it this way. We cannot do it another way. Or maybe our past pain and people are trapping us. Just like I may be trapped to this chair here. That everywhere I go, I'm trapped. God says, go there. I can. I can. I can. You know what? The only person who can let it go is yourself. No one can do it for you. We need to let it go. We need to cut this. We need to have a pair of scissors. <laughs> and let it go. Let it go. Ah, ah. Let me try again. It's not very easy to let go, but you have to try and try and try. Let it go. If your past does not bring happiness to your life, what do you do? Okay, everybody in unison, right? You respond to me, all right? Let's be, uh, <laughs> let us do this together. If your past does not bring happiness to your life, let it go. come on, you got to do better than this. Let it go, okay? Right, one more time. If your past does not bring happiness to your life, let it go. if your past is not constructive, if your past does not let you grow, if your past does not propel you forward, if your past cons outnumber the pros, if your past does not continue, or do, sorry, if your past does not contribute positively to your life, let it go, let it go. Let it go. And free yourself. We sang that. Whoever God sets free is free indeed. Are you free? Or are you still holding on to your past? That's, 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 that's too far. That's too dangerous. I don't know if it ever work. And we are held back. Abraham, Walk. His name is Narov. At 13 years old, there was 
civil war in Cambodia. So among the Khmer Rouge, they have their own factions and they were fighting themselves too. And one of those factions of Khmer Rouge went to his home and killed his father. He actually witnessed the killing of his father. They dragged the father's body out to the courtyard and there several men pointed their guns at him and killed him. Narov's uncle was a general of one of those factions in the Khmer Rouge. And so the uncle recruited him at 13 years old as a child soldier and gave him his rifle and said, go out and kill those who killed your father. Go and kill them and show no mercy. At 13 years old. So with a few men, he went and looked for those who murdered his dad and they found this group of men and he shot them one by one. After that, he had nightmares. And his uncle continued to use him and said, hey, see that woman there who is pregnant? Kill him or kill her. He, she belongs to another group. Kill her. He refused. And the uncle's man pointed a gun at his temple. If you don't kill that woman, we will kill you. So he went up to the woman and shot that woman who was pregnant. At 13 years old. And he was filled with trauma. He had so much regrets, nightmares practically every night. 20 years, old, uh, 20, 20 years ago, when People for Care and Learning set up our, our office in Siam Rip, he came to our office and asked if we could give him a job. We gave him more than a job. We gave him Jesus. And he questioned, I killed so many people. Your Jesus can forgive me? I said, Absolutely. He became a Christian. He got married, brought his, has a young family, brought them all to church, and served faithfully until five years ago, he and his wife decided that they want to do something on their own, and they set up a store that sells kebab, and they were doing very well. If you see him today, you would never imagine that he was a murderer, a killer, at 13 years old. He and I are of the same age, but at 13 years old, I was chasing a little ball around the field and he was chasing man to kill. But we all have the same God. Amen? He was set free. No more nightmares after he accepted Jesus. You know, those who are in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Are you living a new life? Or you are Christians which still, which, which still have the old past in you. That you're not set free. You know, I want to thank your church because this is what we do in Cambodia. We help people like Narov. We bring children who are abandoned. They were called care trash kids because they would live in the dump site. Every time the dump truck comes, they would rush to the dump truck and then take a stick to poke and find food for the day. So we brought some of these children to our homes and we began to empower them. We told, we told them that they can be anyone if they want to be and we will be here to support them. And so this little girl in white said, no, I'm a trash girl. I will always be a trash girl. Nobody will believe in me. No, I, can, I, I, I cannot be anyone that you told me that I can be. 
There's no way. And we keep encouraging her. And one day she said this, I want to be a doctor because there's no doctors in the village and people die just because of diarrhea and all that. And today, she is Dr. Sipo Ong. From the killing field to the healing field. And you know what? You're all part of this because since 2018, you set up 10 every Christmas season to sell trees. And since 2018, you have raised a, over $83,000 to help these kids. Thank you, church. Thank you. One day, when you bought those trees, one day you will come before Jesus, and then Jesus will thank you and say, thank you for clothing me. I was naked, you clothed me, and you were wondering, you say, when did we clothe you, Jesus? When did we ever see also you naked? Well, when you bought those trees, clothes were sent to us, and we had those. Thank you. And those kids, whom you have never met, one day you will meet them in heaven. They will rush to you and say, thank you. That would be such a joyful time of celebration, isn't it? Because this is what Jesus said. When you clothe me, when you clothe the poor, you're clothing me. So thank you. And to buy that you have bought those trees and buy a trees, change your life season is coming. Keep buying those trees, please. If you want to serve, please volunteer to serve. And sign up today. It's at the counter outside. Woohoo! Stand up, remember? <laughs> Do something. Now, uh, if you want to sponsor a child, um, you can pick up one of those at the counter. There are 130 different children, different uh, flyers. Pick them, bring it home, and pray. Because you can school and feed a child three meals a day for $1.33. Less than what you have paid for a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Just a dollar thirty-three cents. You will feed a child for for the day, three meals, plus sending them to school. Forty dollars a month. You can start, stop anytime you wish. So there are about 130 kids out there. The flyers, the information are there, and you can pick them up and consider about sponsoring one of those children. And we'll keep you updated about this child that you have sponsored. And obviously God will eventually tell you the person whom you sponsored because one day you will meet him. Possibly in heaven. Thank you so much for your contribution, for your generosity. Jesus said this, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So stand firm. Do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. I just want to close with this little video just to encourage you to move on. Don't go back. Don't go back. I'm sorry. This man was trying to rescue this little sheep or lamb from the ditch. And he did. Woohoo! Yes! Yay! Boof! <laughs> God bless you all.